some blue. color to it. What we got coming up this year? The Green Castle Boom Streamer. Okay, now of course we've tied the Green Castle Boom probably twice before, haven't we? Yeah, in, in two different, different variations. variations. And this is another variation on a streamer hook and with uh, a red head, mm -hmm. which is not always done. Yeah, well, like I say, you know, the, the, I said in the last show, uh, the Green Castle Boom did have a red head mm -hmm. with the originator. And by the originator, right? Actually, all the costume rooms had redheads. Now, uh, in in New Brunswick and in Newfoundland, we usually favor the uh, the blackhead. But the redhead is really doing well the past few years here, all over Newfoundland. Yeah. What's the advantage of the streamer pattern or streamer hook over just the regular pattern on regular uh, more regular hook? Okay. Uh, in in deeper water, mm -hmm. and r let's say rougher water, larger water, mm -hmm. what you do is you get. Uh, a fly that's long, mm -hmm. but it is not heavy and sinks down underneath, right? It's like a lot of our fish in Newfoundland like to take the fish very, uh, fly very close to the surface. Okay. And the streamer fly, if we had used a big salmon hook, a standard salmon hook, it'd be or a double, it'd be getting getting it down. Too low. Too low. We want it up around the surface. So if you're in deep water or very fast moving water, and you're not having much luck, you should uh, maybe you should, you'd be better off using the streamer hook. Yeah, yeah. You can you can you can do two different techniques. You can use the standard hooks. And uh, and the doubles and whatever to get the fly down. If that's not working, mm -hmm. go back up top with the streamer hooks. They're easier to cast, also. Okay. You and and you can still be using the same pattern. Oh yes, green. definitely. Yeah, I'm just different hooks. Yeah. Now I use uh, on that particular fly. I also use uh, a 3906 B hook and a hair hackle. It's a very good fly. Actually, the fish and opening credits that we do, uh, it took a fly, a fly just like that. Uh, mm -hmm. A gentleman, Mason Morfitt from Maine. Got that fish. Hooked them. Yep. On a green, First day salmon fish. Green cast boom yeah. on the streamer. First day salmon fishing. First time ever. First time ever. He rose two big ones in the morning, then went up. You must be a good luck charm or something, or a, a, a darn fine guy. No, no. Uh, whatever. The thing about it is. Uh, you were good you, luck for me. Well, yeah, but I mean, sometimes you get. Uh, you, you know what you're doing, number one. But number two is sometimes you're lucky. I mean, you can go up there sometimes and you can fish or you can guide and you can do all you can, you, you, you'd, you'd like mm -hmm. to do, but it, no luck. So there is luck involved at times. The right conditions, the right fly, any idiot can catch a salmon. Yep. I read that somewhere. Uh, well, well, yeah, all right. Mm. Anyways, let's continue on. All right, what have we got? Uh, here's a look at what the pattern is for this week's program. The hook is a 3 to 4X long streamer. The thread is white 3 0 monocord, red 6 0 monocord. The tag is flat silver tinsel. The butt is fluorescent red, non on stretch. The body is green Fentex or chenille. Is that correct? Yes. The ribs, flat or oval silver tinsel, the wing, gray squirrel tail, the hackle, yellow saddle collared, and the head is red. And like I mentioned in the last, in last week's show, we're not going to use red cement, red thread. Yeah, red thread. I always like red thread. I yeah. find that when you're putting red uh, cement on your heads, sometimes you'll get it on the wings or it'll bleed down into the hackle. Mm -hmm. Also, in you're painting. Yep. yep. All righty. Well, okay, let's, let's go. Let's get at it. Now, what we'll do, as we normally do, is tie our thread in right behind the eye on these loop eye, or ring eye hooks. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put down an underbody again of, uh, of tinsel. You don't have to do this. This is my preference. And this will also form a portion of the tag, right? Yep. Actually, I'm going to go back a few wraps. That's my headspace there, right? I tied it in with five turns in place, and then I wrap my, excuse me, my my thread up towards the eye just to get out of the way. Now I'll just put down some lacquer on the body, mm -hmm. on the hook shank, and what we'll do is we'll just wrap that down edge to edge. Oh, grabby go! Yeah, I'll take my time. It's pretty easy to whip through these flies, and you can't make sure out of it. <laughs> Not if I was tying them, it wouldn't be. Well, we, we would have a, a, a mini series <laughs> <laughs> for each fly. There we go. That's looking pretty good. You see, you're using a fair amount of pressure just with the way that the, the yeah. bites and everything is tugging. Yeah, I like that. It's really secure my materials. Now, some materials you just can't put too much pressure on, like ostrich rod or something like that, you know? Yeah. But modern tinsel, you can really go to it, you know. Okay. What we'll do is just clip out the, wa the waist end. Okay. Now, our next material to be tied in is our butt. 
We'll grab this. Uh -huh. You gotta watch that there. You don't want any any uh, slackness Slack. in your twining thread. So you're gonna go right down to the bottom, or? Yep. Uh, no, actually, I'm gonna have a, a portion of the tinsel showing for my tag, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. For sure. There. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna, on, a, on this particular fly here, I'm going to leave a little bit more tinsel than I would have bought. That's not really red, is it? No, it's a, it, well, it's a fluorescent, you see? And uh, it's more of a pink than a red, yeah. to tell you the truth. But it's oh. all I have at the moment, so. Don't lie to me. Don't lie, don't lie. OK, now what we'll do is, again, we'll lay down some cement. Not much now. Mm -hmm. This stuff is, is pretty good stuff. It doesn't uh, get, get, get torn up as, as easily as floss or rayon or whatever like that, right? Yeah. And I'm going to build that up just a little bit. I'm not going to keep it, I'm not going to make it too wide, but I'm going to make it oval in shape, OK? Sure. And that cement helps me to keep the materials in place. And it doesn't slip off and slide down, you know? There we go. Now, I'll, I'll just keep some of the waste in there. For the body? Yeah, but uh, the thing is now, there's not gonna, there's, you're not going to see the underbody so much in this flying away. Like, if we had used chenille, you wouldn't see an underbody at all. Like, I mean, you know, the, the bumps through or whatever. Mm -hmm. So this one right here, we're, we're just, we're, we're going to use Fantex wool on this one. And it's not much different. It, it, uh, the bump of the body is not going to be so bad in a way. It's not so critical, as in flask-bodied or tinsel-bodied flies, right? And what we'll do now is we'll slip that up on there. Tie it off one turn. And just slide it in right here. Now, we're not going to taper this body either. We're just going to wrap one layer from the rear right to the front. Okay. It's not a big concern. These are very simple flies and very effective. Another fly that we taught in the streamer style was uh, the orange puppy, the Humber orange, the bowl castle, and another one which was the blue, Duto blue charmer. It's quite similar to this in technique, you know? Mm -hmm. But the Duto is a good fly, I guarantee you. Not used much, you know, by, by, by the locals, only the really knowledgeable ones. I know a fellow in St. John's who comes out and fishes the Humber a lot, Terry Byrne. He swears by it, right? As opposed to me, he usually swears on him. Yeah, you know, no, Terry's a good fisherman. And uh, although I must say, he uh, gave my orange riffle fly a good workout last year, and he got one about 20, 25 pounds up there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That was a top fly up there last year. The orange riffle? Yep. In the streamer. Streamer style. Which is odd, because I mean, there's no butt tag, whatever tail. It's yeah. Just, just a black body, ribs, and orange throat, and wing. Mm -hmm. OK, now, I'll tell you what I'll do here now. I'm going to switch my thread over. Now, we have got a nice underbody there. It's nice and smooth, right? Sure. Yeah. It's just. Uh, it's not as critical with Fantex or Chenille. But the key here is that the underbody is, I'm not wrapping through it really quick, like spacing the turns of the thread, tying thread, mm -hmm. and it, which will slow, slow up, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, let's see, the red thread. This is gonna be our thread for the head. You uh, tying it in now? Yep. Uh, the other thread is 6 ohm monocord, and it's a little thicker. So I'll use this stuff right here. It's a lot thinner, right? That's another technique you can, you can learn, right? Less wraps of, of uh, smaller size thread leads to a nice, neat fly, right? My golly. Can't find a hole, buddy. I tell you. Get the shakes this morning. You yeah. Too much coffee. Or not enough coffee. Not enough coffee. Like. <laughs> Okay, now we'll just split it up. That makes a nice body. I must say it makes a, how would you say it? A nice, smooth, indestructible body almost, you know? Wow. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Does it come with a guarantee or? No guarantees in salmon fishing. Only guarantee. Are you end to end or are you overlapping? No, nope, just slightly. edge to edge almost. Edge to edge, okay. Now we'll just tie it off right there. Okay. Isn't that pretty? That's a nice body. That's a beautiful color whirl. Whoa. Whirl. Whoa. 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 Uh, Clarence Wearing gave me that. You know Clarence? Oh, yeah. King of the Humber. King of the Humber, sir. Clarence is one of my good buddies. He's an excellent fisherman. Excellent guide, too. 
Jack of all trades, master of some, like Santa Clarence, right? <laughs> well, I guarantee you, Clarence Worm is, uh, how would you say it? He's uh, the handiest guy I ever saw in my life. He can fix a motor. He can shoe a horse. Is he a good cook? Yeah, he's a good cook, too. And the tip of the week for this week is what, Obi-Wan? Streamers for salmon. Streamers for salmon. Uh, you can convert a lot of standard patterns to the streamer stall, and the streamer stall is working better and better every year. Mm -hmm. More people are realizing the benefits of it, you know. Uh, early in the year, especially when the, the fish are first coming in, mm -hmm. or late in the fall, streamers really work well. Okay, so now, early in season and late in season. Yeah. Now, we don't get any fall fishing over here in Newfoundland. Uh, our season closes on Labor Day. Well, they fish right up until October. Mm -hmm. Middle October to late October on the mainland. We should be able to fish too, but streamers are, are excellent flies because they're easy to cast. Mm -hmm. Like if you had a, a, a salmon iron, a regular salmon hook the size of the length of that there, it would be very hard to cast. But streamers are very easy to cast, they're lighter wire. Uh, again, converting uh, any standard pattern to streamers, like the blue charmer's been converted uh, with the Duto. Mm -hmm. Beautiful fly in the cast boom style, like this one here. So, what do you do? You just stretch the pattern out? Just stretch just, the pattern just out. Stretch out the song? Yeah, normally uh, the Creep. tags are a little bit longer mm -hmm. than, uh, than in the standard. Uh, various colored bodies, like the silver monad body flies, are really good in gold. Uh, black chenille, uh, green wool, and green chenille. Excellent flies. Okay. What I'm going to do is double the hack like in but I'm going to put on the heckle after, after the wing is on, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to get it prepared. And now here's the thing about Newfoundland Casa Booms too. Now the Casa Boom is a, is, a, is, a, is a Nova Scotia pattern. It was originated by John Casa Boom back in the 1920s, I do not believe. That's the name. Thus the name, and it was on the Marguerite River, one of their best rivers. Mm -hmm. And uh, John liked to have, or what I've seen lately now in, in a lot of flies is, they like to have their hackle almost back to the end of the body. I don't favor that, and we don't favor that around here either. We like a short hackle, very slim or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you use a very short hackle, you just want the, the, the hint of the color there. Sometimes you heavily hackle. You want the floor to ride a little higher. So there's all kinds of little knickknacks, right? Variations on that fly. Mm -hmm. Variations on a the theme. Yep, okay, now we're gonna get our Gray squirrel. This is a pretty, pretty poor looking gray squirrel. Mm, on the brown side there. No, it's actually, uh, I think this fellow had malnutrition. <laughs> <laughs> Sent him over a lot of heat from over. Huh? It's pretty, pretty rough looking. Uh, I'm so glad I don't have to clean up this mess after. What do you say? Right, we'll get Cyril to do it. No, we won't. There we go. Cyril's our cameraman, right? Our old standby. Okay, we'll stack the hair and we'll measure it off to just past, just inside the bend, mm -hmm. right? And what we'll do now is we'll just trim it on an angle, right? We gotta trim it on an angle. And glue it? Yeah, we'll cement the stubs. Cement it, whatever. And is there enough there for the rule of thirds, or will we go just oh, no, double? No, no uh, we can go rule of thirds. Okay. okay, now we'll put it right up to the end of the eye, like mm -hmm. the end of the return right there. Mm -hmm. One. Two. And two, and three. Okay. There we go. I just buried the stub ends there. There. I licked that in the place. Now, in the last one, and the... And the um was it the blue lax or lax of blue? blue. Uh, didn't you tie the hackle in first and then collared and pulled it down? But this one here is going to be collared around and in front of the wing. Uh huh. I do pay attention sometimes. Yeah. Okay, we're going to tie it in underneath. Mm -hmm. We're going to just slip our hackle pliers off because we want a little bit of room to maneuver in here. You know, clip loop there. Oops, boy, girl. That was a bad clipping job, eh? I tell you. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll just... You haven't left yourself very much hackle. No, I'm going to keep this nice and light now. Yeah. Again, we're going to wrap. I'm going to, firstly, I'm going to uh, chop off that stem a little bit. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Okay, we're gonna fold it over. Mm -hmm. Like I say, it's just the weight of the hackle bars resting on it, right? Wraps are edge to edge. And we'll just tie it off right there. Now you see that it's nicely blended back with the wing, right? Oh, yeah. Again, if we had wrapped it just ordinary without folding the hackle, you'd have to make double the number of wraps to get the desired effect, and you'd have to wrap back on your uh, hackle to get it, get, it, get it back, and you'd uh, double the head uh, bolt, right? Okay, now we make sure that we, on, on no return loop eyes, like just ring eyes, mm -hmm. we got to bury in the, the, uh, the cut end of it, right? Of the hook. There. Beauty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoa. Oh, I went excessive that time. Big time. Yeah. There. Alrighty. Good. It's a done deal. Yes, sir.